Okay, guys. So what we're going to be making today is going to be some meatloaf. Um, I'm not really sure how much ground beef this is because I always buy the big packs and split them up. So this looks to be maybe about a pound and a half of ground beef. I would say maybe, yeah, probably about a pound and a half because I had a three and a half pound bag and this is a, a little less than half of it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to add in half of a chopped onion. Now you can always add more onions in if you want to. I I like about half of an onion. Sometimes I add a whole onion in. Not all the time. Now, normally I would be adding adobo in replace of this ingredient, but I don't have any more right now, and I don't feel like running to the grocery store. So, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this. It is basically beef-flavored bouillon, but it is the powder version of it. It does come in cubes. I usually use the chicken cubes to make... Um, really anything but I use that with a cup to two cups of water as chicken stock so you can use the chicken bouillon as chicken stock but this is just regular beef bouillon and I'm going to use probably about a teaspoon of this now and you'll see this later on what I normally do after I make my meatloaf before I put it in the pan to bake I take a little piece off and I fry it in the pan and taste it so that if I need to season it anymore I have time to do that before it's done and bland and I put about a teaspoon and a half of this uh, beef bouillon in about a tablespoon of minced garlic about a uh, a teaspoon of parsley and I'm gonna say about two shakes or uh, three shakes of all spice I don't know what the measurement of that is at all because I'm just shaking that and black pepper to taste salt to taste I'm not using a lot of salt because I have so many other flavors but beef is a little bland so I do want to make sure that I flavor it a little bit about a half of a teaspoon of thyme about a teaspoon of cumin now I've never made meatloaf without cumin it just to me does not taste right without cumin if you don't like cumin don't put it in that's something that I personally like. And about a half a teaspoon of paprika. And we're going to measure in probably about a tablespoon and a half, probably about a tablespoon or so of breadcrumbs. Now this is a great debate. Some people say if you put breadcrumbs in, you don't need to put an egg in. Some people say if you put an egg in, you don't need to put a breadcrumbs in. I always put an egg and breadcrumbs in because I find that the egg binds everything together and the breadcrumbs make everything moist. So all you want to do is, I'm going to mix this with the spoon first and then get in there with my hands. You just want to go ahead on and combine all of this together. And if you notice that your meatloaf is not not sticking together which sometimes it doesn't and with this amount of ground beef I'm actually gonna need a second egg I can already tell because it's not binding but once I have this all combined and I'm, I am gonna add a second egg I'm gonna fry up a little piece to taste for seasoning and if I need to adjust anything I will so stay tuned and you know what I forgot guys like one of the key ingredients to meatloaf I mean ketchup <laughs> You can put in as much or as little bit of ketchup as you want. It's time for me to do a little grocery shopping, so I'm running low on a lot of stuff. And I'm, I'm going to top this with ketchup as well. So I'm not going to put a whole, whole lot in here. Probably about, I'd say about two tablespoons or so. Okay, guys, so I went ahead and I did my little taste test, and for the most part, it didn't need any more seasoning. I added a little bit more salt, but that's because I don't have any adobo. I have this in a regular loaf pan. Um, I'm not sure of the size of it. I'll put it down if I 
if it's on the bottom, but this is a really old loaf pan. All you're going to want to do is stick this into the oven at 400 degrees for about 45 minutes to an hour. And after it is done baking, that's when you're going to put the topping on it and put it underneath the broil to caramelize it. But you'll see that. Coming up next, I'll make the topping for it. So stay tuned, guys. Okay, guys. So this is going to be the ketchup topping. You just want to take about, mm, about a half a cup of ketchup, if you can get that much out. Because it tells you, I need to go grocery shopping. So, get as much ketchup out as you can. I actually need to add a little bit of water to this. Not much, though. You don't need to do that if you have enough ketchup. I just am running out. Well, a couple shakes of black pepper, not much at all, and about two tablespoons of brown sugar. And this is what really sets this off. It's a nice sweet um, topping for your meatloaf. I would normally make this sweet and spicy by adding some red pepper flakes in there, but my daughter is my my 13 month old daughter is going to be eating some of this meatloaf so i'm not going to make it spicy um only because i i'm already cooking her some of her own vegetables i don't feel like making her own meat too but if i were you guys i would throw some red pepper flakes in here to make it a sweet and spicy sauce you're just going to add about a tablespoon or so of light corn syrup that gives it another sweet taste and it also makes it thick and gooey when it broils so just give it a little taste Let's see if it needs anything and it doesn't um i'm gonna put a little bit more pepper in there not much and you don't need any salt in this because you have your salt from the actual ketchup i'm gonna say about four tablespoons of brown sugar one tablespoon of corn syrup and a half a cup of ketchup and that's good so you're just going to set that aside and when your meatloaf is done you're going to put this on top so see you in a few guys Okay guys, so my meatloaf is pretty much done. You do want to make sure that you drain it um, because there's probably going to be a lot of fat at the bottom depending on the, the type of ground beef or the percentage that you got. Mine was a little fatty, so I went ahead and drained it. All you want to do now is spoon over your ketchup mixture your sweet ketchup now if i didn't add the water this would definitely be much thicker but that's okay because it's going to go underneath the broiler and it's sliding down the side so it's going to get nice and good so all you want to do now is put this underneath the broiler well actually put it back into the oven on 400 degrees for about 10 minutes and then turn the broiler on for five minutes so we'll see you in a few guys okay guys so this is what the meatloaf looks like after you take it from underneath the broiler um like i said the ketchup sauce is a little bit thinner than it was the last time because of the water but it still gave it a really nice glaze and it's Sticky. and it's gonna taste so good plus if you can look down there of course some of it mixed with the fat and everything so that's just gonna be delicious you can even if you do want to make it a little bit thicker take this out of the pan when it cools take all of that ketchup and grease and everything put that into a pan with a little bit of flour and a little bit of butter and make a sauce out of it that you can pour over top of it which I actually may do. If I do, I'll let you guys know. But this is what it looks like after you take it out from the broiler. Hope you enjoyed. Rate, subscribe. Bye. Okay, guys. So this is the finished dinner. We have our meatloaf with our sweet glaze, our low-fat mashed potatoes. And I didn't video this. These are spicy garlic um, sugar snap peas. All I did was put them 
in a pot with a little bit of margarine, some beef bouillon, and a little bit of salt and pepper and some red pepper flake. So this is what the finished meal looks like. Hope you guys enjoy. Rate, subscribe. Bye.